the best memory of my grandfather was uh, when I was a kid. We went fishing down at the Lopa Reservoir. The best memory I have of me and my grandfather is when he used to come down to my house all the time, pick me up from school, and then cook dinner for the whole family. I would literally go home and my friends would call me. I would say, no, I don't want to hang out. I'd hang out with my grandfather. My fiance and I and my son Hunter shot right over here and shortly after he ended up passing away. Before that he got to see Hunter one more time and I knew he was very close to Hunter and it's his first grandchild so it was, uh, it was peaceful I would say the way he uh, passed on. Like footprints in the sand, our loved ones leave an impression on our hearts. My father, Roy Smith, was an amazing man. I consider him a trailblazer. He was um, divorced at a very young age, and he had two daughters, myself and my sister, Donna. He brought us up by himself. He had a local job. He was a truck driver and he drove for um, troop trucking. Total irony to be in this business, to, to choose this industry, um, which suited <laughs> our business so well, my father's company so well, because he treated the customers like gold. He was literally sweeping up un under the dumpsters, um, keeping the dumpsters clean inside and out, scraping them just going the extra, extra mile for every customer. Those dear to us rise like the tide and carry us in countless ways. He, he was just there every moment of my life for everything. It's nothing you ever forget, believe me, and it's, it's something you're forever grateful for. Because the cancer was through his body, um, he was losing the fight. And he had made his wishes clear to my sister and myself that he wanted to be at home when he passed away. You know, it's one of the hardest gifts she'll give is to have somebody home on hospice. But it's one of the most amazing gifts to give. When the voyage is long, we reach to others for compassion and strength. We take a lot of burden off of, you know, a situation that could be really difficult for some people who may not have a lot of help. They're looking for somebody that's going to help lead them through this journey that they're on. It's a hard journey and it can be a long journey. So they need somebody that's strong and able to do that. My father had a lot of pride, so it was very difficult for him to have to have someone come in to assist him with just personal hygiene. The dignified way with which they treated him was, it, it would make me cry. They addressed him by name. They didn't do anything he was uncomfortable with. They did, they explained everything. They, did, they weren't on their schedules, they were on his schedule. Each grandson came in and helped wash and dress him in his favorite outfit after he passed away. And that was really profound for me. It was, if he was in the hospital, that wouldn't have happened. There are so many people out there today that do not have the luxury of dying in their home with their family. A hospice walk and coming out to walk creates that sense of community and that sense of understanding and that sense that, you know what, I'm not alone in this. So that whole camaraderie piece and that bringing together and raising awareness, critical. I could not have orchestrated that day any better than how it had all played out for everybody to be here you know, for our whole family to be around him when he passed. That's what the walk is for. That is 
what keeps these people in our homes to take care of our loved ones, to, to lend their shoulder when you want to cry or you have a question. So I'll be walking.